Hello, my name is Robert Love, and in this video I'm going to explain some debugging techniques for the Open FCOE software stack. Today's date is Saturday, August 18th, 2012, and we are looking at the Linux kernel version 3.5. In this video, I'm going to explain how to use the debug logging module parameters for the libfc, libfcoe, and fcoe kernel modules. I'll also briefly cover the SCSI logging levels for the SCSI subsystem. I will then explain the fcoe mon configuration file environment variables that turn on debugging for fcoe mon. Then we'll talk about some debugging scripts that we have in the FCOE Utils code repository. And finally, we'll talk about a way to dump the current state machine of FCOE Mon. The debug logging module parameters represent bit masks that you can set to turn on various logging levels. We can look at uh, the module parameters that are used to set these levels by looking in sysfs. So here you can see that the FCOE kernel module the libfcoe kernel module and the libfc kernel module all have debug logging module parameters. Now these can be set when you're loading the kernel module or they can be set at runtime as I'm going to demonstrate now. So the key to knowing what to turn on or what bit mask to set is to know what the various logging levels are. Unfortunately, this is not always obvious. Uh, the information is in the in kernel header files. So let me change to my kernel source directory. And uh, these line numbers may change in the future, but for the 3.5 kernel, I have uh, determined what lines I need to look at. So these are the logging levels for the libfc kernel module. These are the logging levels for the libfcoe kernel module. And these are the logging levels for the FCOE kernel module. So again, uh, each of these debug logging files represents a bit mask for the which logging levels you wish to turn on. So for example, if we wanted to turn on L port logging, R port logging, and exchange manager logging, we would need to logically or hex 2.0, hex 0.8, and hex 0.2 together, which results in hex 2a. So if we wanted to turn on those logging facilities for the libfc kernel module, we would simply echo 0x 2a into the sys module libfc parameters debug logging file. Now uh, this is a way to turn on specific logging facilities but if you are just generally debugging and simply want more output and you are unsure 
which area of the kernel your problems exist in. Uh, sometimes a simple echo of FFFF F, F, uh, is sufficient because this will turn on all of the debug logging. So here I've shown you examples for libfc. This is how you would turn it on for libf libfcoe. And finally, for the fcoe kernel module. Now I've turned on all of the debug logging for those three kernel modules. SCSI also has a module parameter, the SCSI logging level, and we can look at a SCSI header file to see what SCSI logging levels there are. So here you can see we have a nice comment explaining the SCSI logging levels. We have the various levels, or maybe facilities I should say, and then in SCSI each of those facilities or, or logging groups has three levels each. Uh, actually I should say eight levels each because it is a three bit uh, value. The fcuemon daemon also has debug logging that can be enabled. To do so, we simply edit the global configuration file for fcuemon. It is located in etc fcue config. And we can see that the first variable says debug equals no. Uh, debug logging is off by default. We can enable it by setting this to yes. We can save the file. Uh, we also need to stop the FCOE service. And start it again so that when it starts, the debugging is enabled. And now extra debug logging will be written to your system log file, most likely var log messages. So here we can see a lot of the kernel debug logging that we turned on, as well as some of the user space debug logging that was turned on. If DCB is required on an interface, FCUE mon will communicate with the LLD pad daemon to determine if DCB has been configured correctly and negotiated correctly with the switch before it attempts to start an FCUE session on that given interface. We can look at the per interface FCUE configuration file to determine if DCB is required or not. So here we can see the DCB underscore required environment, environment variable is set to yes, which means that FCUE mon will communicate with LLD pad and will not start the FCUE connection until LLD pad tells it that DCB has been configured correctly. There, are some, there is a script in the debug directory of the FCUE utils code repository that uh, communicates with LLD pad to determine if DCB has been configured correctly for an interface. So let me switch to my FCUE, FCUE utils code repository. And into the debug directory. And here you can see the DCB check script. So I'm going to run the DCB check script against my interface.
Here you can see it complains that three things are not set correctly. So I will turn DCB on as is suggested. And I will turn on priority flow control as is suggested. I will not do the third setting because I will rerun the script to show that it continues to complain that the app FCOE TLV has not yet been enabled. So now that it's enabled, when I run the script, it tells me the DCB is correctly configured and it's ready, FCOE is ready to run on it. Also in the debug directory is the FCOE dump script, which dumps as much system information and FCOE information as well as LLD pad and DCB information as it can to standard out. Uh, it dumps tons and tons of stuff including uh, messages and dmessage and pretty much anything that developers could think of that might be useful to somebody debugging. Um, so let me run it. And there you can see there's a lot of output. Uh, a common way to run this might be to echo the output, or I should say to redirect the output to a file that maybe you could post online or share with a developer or somebody could help that could help you debug. Some of the uh, files that the dump script tries to um, access are not readable and therefore we get a couple permission denied warnings but uh, none of these are problems they are expected often developers would want to see a dump before your problem then they would want to know the procedure that you went through to reproduce the problem and then again they would want to see a dump after the problem so that they could compare the state of the system before the problem procedure and then after once the problem has occurred. FCOE MON has an internal state machine for all of the interfaces on the system and uh, if DCB is required the states that it thinks DCB is in uh, as it gets to a ready state. We can send a signal to the FCOE MON daemon to dump this state information. We can do that by running the kill command and sending it the 10 signal. And this is told FCOE MON to dump its state tables. And here you can see uh, FCOE MON has dumped information about interfaces and their states. Uh, the output is not particularly pretty, but if you are debugging FCOE MON and, or it is not behaving correctly, uh, this may give you lots of good information. This concludes the video. I hope it's been helpful. Thank you very much.